All right, guys, we're back with another video to celebrate our incoming stock of Nicola Plus. We are doing a roundup comparison of the top three high-performing wheels in the 2000 watt category for 16 inches. So we've got Kingsong 16X, InMotion V10F, Gotway Nicola Plus. So we're gonna give you our thoughts, we're gonna give it a ride, we're gonna break it down and let you know what we think. Okay guys, we are back inside now because we got rained out oddly enough here in Southern California. It rained really hard for the first time in, I don't know, a year. But we got a lot of writing time in. Between all of us here, we have a lot of time and experience riding all three of these wheels. But, you know, it's another thing to ride them back to back in the same condition. So that's what we wanted to do today, to kind of give a direct comparison and you kind of get a better idea of really those those nuances between all the different models out there. We've got the InMotion V10F, Kingsong 16X, and Gotway Nicola Plus. So this one we're actually gonna have in stock really soon. The orders are up now. Uh, we're gonna have the newest battery technology that Gotway is pushing out the door with the 21700 cells, um, and ours will be the A1000 watt hour variant. First of all, we wanna talk about performance. So Nick, what do you think about how these all size up together? Right, so first we'll talk about speed. Uh, if you're looking to get one of the t highest top speeds of any wheel available, you definitely want to go with the Nikola. Being that the 100 volt variant goes up to, I've maxed it at 38 miles an hour, but it is possible to go faster if you're a lighter rider. The 16X is capped at 31 miles an hour, and the V10 slash V10F is capped at 25. Yeah. So if you're a speed dimming like me, you might want to go for the Nikola, but the 16X is still very respectable, as is the V10. Yeah, it's interesting because they're all in the same motor category around that 2000 watt area, but they do all feel quite a bit different. So in terms of off-roading, I feel that each three of these wheels has very different performance. So I really like the off-road feel of the V10. The way the firmware works makes it almost act as sort of a software suspension, as some have described it. I really like how it just handles whatever you throw at it, despite not having that fat tire that the Nickel and 16X do. I think the 16X is also very respectable at off-roading. There's something about the way it handles those bumps as well as just how the tire and motor perform that just makes off-roading an enjoyable experience. The Nikola is still capable of off-roading given that it has that thick tire, but I feel like due to the way that Gotway has tuned their firmware, it's a lot more firm than on these two wheels. So you might feel impacts a bit more because the motor isn't allowing you to compensate for, those, for hitting those bumps. So I'd say the V10 is the best for off-road performance, followed closely by the 16X, and then the Nikola coming in third. Here's the most interesting part of this comparison for me. Uh, I really, really love comparing how these wheels feel so completely different. There's so much that goes into the engineering in terms of the physical layout and design, but then also the software side of it, where they're literally programming the way these motors respond to your input. So all those things combined together really translate into the way a wheel feels when you ride it. And this is such a unique category in any kind of electric rideable because they're self-balancing. So the way that software works, it has a huge impact on the way um, your entire way of using this vehicle feels. So. Uh, unlike a scooter or something like that, you know, it's just pretty much a, you know, kick on the throttle and you're going and maybe the acceleration curve has a difference between them. But these, because our bodies influence the way we move on them, uh, that software and the ergonomics have a really big impact. So 
What I've noticed over the years, when self-balancing electric unicycles got started, they were a lot more underpowered than they are now. We've come a long way. And so the firmware used to feel a lot different. So they used to be a lot more what we would call soft, uh, and they were slower. And you were allowed to lean a lot further. Uh, and they were also a lot more responsive. They were lighter weight. So a lot of these things come into play when you talk about responsiveness and performance of a wheel. A lower powered wheel, because it's lighter weight and more responsive, is actually going to give you a lot more punch on the lower speeds. So um, just taking off from the start with a lighter, smaller wheel, you're really just going to kind of fly right off the starting line, more so than a bigger wheel. So what we found is over the years, the wheels have gotten heavier and more high performance, much, much faster, and actually a lot stronger motors and batteries too, but there are trade-offs. So one day in an ideal world, I'd love to see it to where there are no trade-offs. You know, I want a high performance motor and a huge battery and a lighter weight wheel would be great all around. But I just, I would like to see it, I'd like to see us get to the point to where we can have the acceleration on the slow speeds as well as the performance on the high end. And right now it's a little bit of a trade-off. So that's where these start to feel a lot different. Um, we mentioned that we're also comparing this to V8F as well. We don't have that sitting up here. Um, but that's also a 16 inch wheel. And it's in a different power category, which is why we're not comparing it directly here um, because it's a 1,000 watt motor instead of these are 2,000 watt motor. But that wheel feels a lot punchier than these. Um, in this category, they all feel a little bit like they're geared at a higher gear. That's the best way I can describe it to you if you're not super familiar with riding all these different kinds of wheels. The faster, the more powerful, the heavier, it feels more like you're, you're trying to take off in a high gear. Um, and eventually that performance starts to kick in as you kind of take off, then all of a sudden it's like the power kind of cranks up and all of a sudden you've got all this wild acceleration power and you're going really fast and it's great. But a small wheel has it right off the bat. So uh, if I had to compare all these wheels together, I'm going to say V10F has the most playful acceleration at the low end. So a lot of that has to do with the weight, like I said before, but this one I would say is more like, you know, second or third gear. 16X is more like third or fourth gear. And the Nikola is more like fifth gear. Um, and that doesn't mean that you can't take off, you know, in a pretty speedy way. In fact, I don't want to pass too much judgment on the acceleration and abilities of the Nikola because Nick here won second place at the LAU games a few weeks ago on the Nikola. So obviously it's capable of a lot of performance and there's a reason that people flock to it for the ultimate in performance. But my point is there are some trade-offs on the lower end. So it takes more effort to get the performance out of it. So it's gonna feel more sluggish when you compare it to these wheels. Now, yes, you can get used to that performance on any of these wheels. If you made this your sole wheel, you'd learn how to use it and you'd be very happy with it. But when you have the luxury of comparing them, you know, you can notice there's a, there's a big difference. Um, so for someone like me, I'd like it to be a little bit more playful. So this is my daily driver, um, but I'm also in love with the performance on the 16X as well. This is somewhere in the middle, you know, this to me is kind of like the best of both worlds when it comes to that performance, that raw performance uh, across the curve at the low end and the high end. So. Uh, for me, the 31 miles an hour is not a restriction at all. Uh, I'm happy just staying in the low 20s and I'm feeling good. So I'm not pushing it into the 30s. I don't, I don't need this. Um, so to me, this is kind of like the best of both worlds because I get that acceleration at the low end, um, enough acceleration at the low end and stopping power. Uh, and then also I still get that extra push all the way through into the higher speed, so. Um, yeah, really well said. I agree with pretty much all the points that you made. Uh, something I just wanted to note real quick is that as you get up into sort of the maybe less torquier wheels, but they still have a lot of performance, you might need to do a bit more mods to them. So something like the V10 straight out of the box, you can just use it in various riding scenarios and it'll feel comfortable in mm -hmm. all of those. Same with the 16X. Um, you might have to do a few mods to improve acceleration, like adding pads onto the side, but those are completely optional. Um, 
Whereas on the Nikola, they're still optional and it's a very enjoyable wheel without them. Mm. But I would not have been able to achieve the performance that I achieved during the Ute Games yeah. if I had not installed special pads to allow my heels to hook into them. They're called Kuji pads if anyone's seen Kuji rolls on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Amazing rider. Um, but I don't think I would have been able to do what I did without those because those allowed me to really get the most out of this wheel and force it to perform better than it probably could have if I hadn't done those mods. Yeah, it's, it's all about forcing your wheels to do what you want it to do sometimes when you're a high performance rider like Nick, you know. Anything you can do to get it to lean forward as hard as you can. If your foot can't do it on the pedal, then you need something on your leg to kind of force it a little bit further over. So yeah, there's all kinds of things you can do to counteract um, these issues that I'm bringing up with the larger, heavier wheels. So there are ways around it, um, but it's never going to quite feel the same as something a little bit lighter. So there are still some trade-offs no matter what you do. The other factor in performance, you know, there's a, there's a lot more to it than just the battery and the motor, but there's also the firmware itself. What InMotion does that I really like, and, and that's part of why I feel like theirs is a lot more playful and enjoyable to ride, especially on the lower end of things where I would more commonly use it. It's the options they give you inside the app um, that allow you to customize the way the firmware feels. When this was originally released, it only had the classic mode, which is similar to what you get on the V8, the original V8. Um, and it's just a really stiff pedal uh, and just pretty rigid. But because the added weight of the V10, it felt pretty sluggish. So what they did is they took feedback from the community and everyone that was trying out the new V10 and they adjusted the firmware to give it a little bit more responsiveness and acceleration. So there is some things that can be done in software to improve the situation and InMotion has proven that. So when they added the comfort mode, is what it's called now, um, that's also available on the new V8F by the way, it's one of those carryover features. Um, this comfort mode allows the pedals to behave in a subtle spring-like way that Nick mentioned earlier, it kind of feels like suspension. Um, and that comes to the comfort mode. And so it still remains a very stable platform that allows you to ride in a high performance kind of way. You can, you can jump off ledges, you can take it off road, it can handle you know whatever you throw at it. It's still very stable, but it's a slight spring-like effect that just makes it a little bit more comfortable to ride. And it leans with you a little bit. And then they take it a step further by giving you pedal sensitivity adjustment. So within that comfort mode, you can now adjust how far the pedal is actually going to lean with you. And that allows your foot to uh, have less pressure on the front end when accelerating and less pressure on your heel when you're braking. Now, to be fair, all of these models have um, these kind of sensitivity adjustments in terms of ride modes, where it's like one mode is softer and it's going to lean more, one mode somewhere in the middle, and then there's a really stiff um, where it stays totally flat. All these wheels do that, but this is more like a kind of one, two, three adjustment on these two, whereas in motion lets you fine tune it uh, on that pedal sensitivity, like all the way from like zero to a hundred within that comfort mode. So they've just taken an extra step. I'd like to see other manufacturers doing it as well. I'm sure there's a lot of progress that can still be made. So really excited about where this could all go um, because now we have this incredible performance. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do uh, to make it feel more responsive across the board and not just a, uh, like, I call it fifth gear syndrome because it just feels like you're driving in fifth gear and I want to feel like I've got a full transmission instead of being stuck in a fixed gear. All right, so in terms of battery size, the V10F does have a slightly smaller battery than these two, clocking in at 960 watt hours, whereas the 16X is 1600 watt hours and the Nikola Plus is either 1800 or 1845 watt hours depending on the cell type. Um, one of the benefits to having bigger battery in addition to range is also increased safety margin. So if you have fewer batteries in parallel, you won't be able to draw as much current and you might over lean the wheel easier. But all of these wheels, I would say that issue is negligible because yeah. we've gotten to the point where batteries are so large where any battery capacity can be considered safe at this point. Mm in these modern wheels that are coming out. So I'd say that if you want more range, you would consider these two, mm -hmm. but the V10F still has a battery size that is very respectable in mm -hmm. terms of both safety and range. Yep. Something else I do think is worth mentioning is the V10, V10F and the 16X will start to throttle your speed beginning somewhere around 50% and will go down past that, whereas the Gotway wheels historically have only started to limit your speed at about 15-ish percent. 
So if you want to enjoy the benefits of higher speed for longer, I would go with the Gotway. Four wheels from Gotway and Kingsong of the exact same battery size. People have reported that Kingsong wheels typically last a little bit longer, and that is because Kingsong lets their batteries discharge a little bit more than Gotway does. So that will lead to increased range, but at those low batteries, it will be throttled very low. So it might be a little bit more impractical at those speeds, but I think riding at any speed is better than having to walk it alongside you. As we keep chasing more performance, range, and speed, um, all those things come at the cost of weight and size, right? And that can be a good thing. It can also be a bad thing for reasons we've already talked about. Um, one being portability and ergonomics. So ergonomics uh, is dear to my heart because it's the very core of the experience, at least for me. It's not just a way to get from point A to point B. It's actually, it feels like it's a part of me when I'm writing it. So the way it kind of, you know, becomes a part of my body almost can really make it, make or break the experience if it doesn't feel right. One of the main reasons I really love the V10F's ergonomics is because it's tall and thin. The reason being tall and thin matters in ergonomics is because you want your legs and your feet to be closer together if you want less pressure on your legs when you're riding with one leg, anytime you're dismounting or mounting the wheel. So I really like to ride in a really casual manner when I'm rolling up to a stop. I don't like to have to try to prep my, my launch and my dismount. I like it to feel like it's a part of me, so I don't really want to think about that stuff. I don't want it to feel precarious when I'm getting on or off the wheel. And so the quick acceleration right off the bat plays into that, and then the tall, thin ergonomics for one leg riding plays into that for me. So that's really why I love this one historically for that reason. Um, but now I gotta say, the 16X really surprised me. And I'm the first to say that my assumption about what this wheel would feel like was dead wrong. So I really thought the width of it, it's pretty chunky looking when you look at it. Um, and it looks wide, it's tallish, and it, but it looks really wide. So I was so convinced before I ever wrote it that it wasn't going to feel as satisfying as I wanted it to feel. I, I was convinced it was gonna be awkward with one leg and I thought it would feel wide, like a wide little brick beneath my feet, but it doesn't. The moment I stepped on this the first time, I was shocked. I just knew it felt perfectly um, in line with my leg the moment I stepped on it. So uh, the way that they have gotten it to feel that way is due to several reasons. Um, part of it is just the shape of the outer shell here. So um, there's a slight inward curve at the top that kind of follows the curve of your leg because you're always going to be gripping the wheel with your legs to a degree, especially when you're riding more aggressively. So the shape of this wheel, even though the pads are like fairly thin and not super soft, they don't need to be because they shaped the shell correctly. So it's one of those things, kind of like the original Inmotion V8, that even though it didn't have built-in padding, it actually feels really good without it. So this really surprised me. The pedal angle is perfect for my legs and my feet. They just sink right in um, and it feels super comfortable. So I, I, was, I was shocked and I got to eat crow on it. It feels great. Getting some time writing this one, it immediately off the bat, I got to say, is not shaped in a way that feels great for my particular body shape, I guess, because uh, the angle of the pedals are fairly steep. So this can be a good thing for some people. Like, men, like Nick mentioned earlier, for off-roading, um, if you're on rough terrain and your feet are more prone to bouncing off of the pedals, you wanna make sure that when you land back on the pedals, that they're gonna sink right back down into the right place for you. That's really critical. So a steeper angle can be a really good thing. For me, the way I use it, it's a little too steep. Um, and what that does is it puts pressure on the outside of your feet because it's forcing your feet to kind of like curve in a little bit. And so the outer edge of my foot is like really, it's putting a lot of pressure on that. So I don't know if it's the shape of my foot. It's a little awkward, but um, it felt like I'm almost trying to stand on the sides of my feet when I'm riding it. So over time, it actually got to be a little bit painful for me. Um, but Again, that's just me. I know there's plenty of people that love the way this ride feels. So if I'm ranking my favorite ergonomics, it's like these two wheels. And this is the shocker. Um, 
Though I still love me a really nice tall thin wheel. So these are in my top. Um, this one I feel like needs a little bit of tweaking for it to be great for my tastes. Um, but I think like Nick said too, some mods can really improve that. So I would be willing to bet that if I did a little work, it would probably feel great for me too. Mm, right, very well said. Yeah. Um, one of the main reasons I like the pedal angle, in addition to off-roading like you mentioned, mm -hmm. is because it allows you to do a lot more sporty maneuvers and it likes you feel a lot more locked in at high speeds. So I agree in the sense that I like these two wheels more for casual riding. Mm -hmm. If I were to only have one wheel, it probably would not be this wheel solely because I usually go longer distances. Mm -hmm. And while the top speed of Gotways is why I continue to come back to that brand, I do much prefer the overtime comfort and ride feeling of these two wheels a little bit more. So over time, I've gotten used to this increased pedal angle. It actually feels like when I step on a unicycle with a lower pedal angle, even though they're completely flat, mm -hmm. it feels to me like they're curving downwards because yeah. my brain has adjusted this crazy pedal angle to actually feel flat. So I've gotten used to that sort of locked in feel that Gotway wheels have. Yeah, but stock, point. I feel like this wheel locks me in better than these other two wheels. Mm -hmm but I would prefer these for longer distance commuting and trips. It really depends on how you're gonna use it. That's the biggest thing you've gotta consider, right? So um, if you, you know, do you live on a flight of stairs? Do you have to traverse up and down? Is there ever going to be a need for you to regularly pick up the wheel? If so, you really need to consider what the handle design is going to mean for you. So um, in the case of the V10, we'll start over here. Um, you can see obviously it's just got like a pretty thin handle up here with the anti-spin button. It's going to allow you to just in one seamless motion pick it up. You automatically depress the button by default when you pick it up and it's going to prevent the motor from spinning out. It's got a flip up, fold up handle. It locks in at the top position and stays upright. Um, and you can fold it right back down if you need to use it as a trolley handle. So it's pretty simple, straightforward. It's all external. King Song also uses a trolley handle, but theirs is a really interesting design because it doubles as both the trolley handle, but also as the carrying handle when you would need to actually pick up the wheel. And so the way they've made that work is that there is a built-in sensor into the handles itself that detect when you're picking it up and it automatically powers off the motor. So it does kind of all of these things in one design. And also it's a two-stage handle that locks halfway up or all the way up. So it's really versatile. This is the best all-around handle solution in my opinion. Um, you also have the Got uh, Gotway Nicola that has a similar fold-up design as the V10. And what they've done that's really cool, I love how it's built into the body itself. So look how it just completely disappears into the body. This is a criticism that a lot of people had with the V10 handle is that they like how easy it is to use, but it's just kind of sticking out. It kind of looks like an afterthought. Whereas this is clearly built into the design of the wheel. It just folds right up um, and it's really elegant. The downside to this type of design is that it also means the width of the entire uh, physical handle cutout here for when you need to physically lift the wheel off the ground, it's very wide on the top. Um, I have, I don't know how big my hands are, but I can't really, you can't really grip it all the way around and pick it up like this. You, it's more of like a one-sided kind of grip where you just kind of stick your hand in, um, and then there is a sensor that detects your hand and it can tell the motor to deactivate just like the other ones. They all have the anti-spin motor. You can pick it up. It's going to stop the motor. Um, so it has all the features. Um, but for me, just with the weight of the wheel, I'm not super thrilled about not being able to physically grab on the entire handle. But um, if you're not carrying it up a flight of stairs or anything, it's kind of one of those negligible things. It's not a big deal. Uh, I definitely also think that the 16X handle is the best all-arounder handle. Um, I also like the V10 handle, but the one thing that really turns me off from it, I like how convenient it is, but it does lock. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the handle locks means that if you go over a bump, the handle won't automatically come down like it does on the Nikola. Like for example, when I'm walking this wheel along off-road, let's say if there's a hill that's too steep, mm -hmm. if I go over a large rock, the wheel is going to come up but my hand won't. So the trolley handle sort of bounces around. Mm -hmm. So if you do a lot of carrying the wheel, trolleying the wheel in difficult situations, that might yeah. be an issue for you. 
but I do like how easy it is to just get off the wheel, flip it up, and then you can carry it, and then when you're done, just slam it down, and it's already back. Yeah, yeah I do like the fold-up design for that reason. And like Nick mentioned, I actually don't like it to lock like this. Um, when I'm wheeling my, my V10 up around a store or something, I keep it unlocked, I keep it down, and I, it's like I'm walking a dog. It's like in front of me and I keep it loose. So it makes it really easy to control, but I don't like when it locks, it's a little bit harder to control that way. So, yeah. So the secret is just not letting it fully extend? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we've covered a lot of the basics. If you're a first timer, it can be really overwhelming to figure out which one of these things you should buy. You know, should you buy something lower end so that you can learn how to ride on it first and then upgrade? Because you know, a lot of people find themselves upgrading um, until they finally land on that high performance wheel that really serves um, their cravings. A lot of us end up craving more and more and more. Um, for me, I've kept my cravings down to a level that needs to be a little bit more practical for my daily use. So I haven't like gone all the way up to, um, well, let me take that back. I do have a monster, Gawai's monster, and that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty what I would call maybe more of an impractical wheel, just due to its physical size, you know, you don't have a trolley handle on that. We're not lumping that into this category, so we're not really comparing that. Um, but generally for my daily use, you know, I, I land with this one, um, but I do have my eye on the 16X a lot. And I love riding it. So could this be my daily driver? Absolutely. You know, so for me, I'm a little bit more casual and I would say from my point of view, if you're a first timer, um, you could go with either one of these, but I would also really strongly consider the V8F, which we don't have out here because it's not in the same uh, motor category. Like I said, it's a 1000 watt motor, but I feel like that's one of the best starter wheels right now. Um, having some time on that just because it gives you that punch. It gives you a fairly high speed at 22 miles an hour. So in terms of who should buy these wheels, I'd say if you're someone who wants to go as fast as possible for as long as possible, something by Gotway, more specifically this Nickel Plus might be the wheel for you. Whereas if you're someone who wants the wheel to fit into your commuting life a bit better and has those little design tweaks that make the wheel just that much easier to use, I would say go for something like the 16X or the V10F. Yeah, um, I agree. Um, in the end, I really enjoy the speed that comes from all of these models because I'm not really pushing it above 30 miles an hour. In fact, I rarely even get close to 30. So for me, it's pretty easy, you know. Um, there's some trade-offs you get from like reaching all the way up. And while Gotway has come a long way with their fit and finish and features and quality, like it's really amazing where they're at now with their performance and their specs. Um, but for me, like the features and those usability um, issues that come with just the subtleties of the ergonomics and the features that are built in. I prefer these two wheels, but if you really need that speed, it's an easy choice. You know, you gotta go with this. Um, you can definitely do more on the high end with it. So it really just comes down to what you need. And that's really what our message is today, I think. While Nick has a different writing preference than I do, we don't agree on all of these things. Really in the end, that's kind of the point, right? Um, everybody's different and you really need to consider how much of a different experience these wheels can really offer and how different they can feel for different riders. So if you have the ability, hook up with your local riding group. Maybe some of those kind riders will let you try out their wheels. If you happen to be in Southern California and you're near San Diego, we do have some demos here. Just reach out to us and there's probably a way we can set up some time for you to come in and try some things out. And we've got them lined up in order of price. Of course, that's the other consideration too. You know, we know that that might make a big difference in your, in your purchase decision. So this is the cheapest, this is in the middle, and this is the most expensive. So you can check out those current prices on our website, yuko.us. Um, you'll find Ukes in the top menu and you can check out all the different models that we have um, on offer and all of these models are available and you can check out the prices there. If you have any questions, just hit us up in the comments, send us a message on the website, like and subscribe. Tell us what you want to hear about next. We're going to be doing a lot more comparison videos 
to help you guys decide what's best for you. We know not everybody has access um, to be able to try these out in person. So just hit us up and let us know what you want to see. Well, that about wraps it up for our review of the 2000 watt motor 16 inch wheels. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Boop. Boop. I love how all these clips start up with me going like.